Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we look at the mammalian circulatory system as a representation of the double circulation of vertebrates. Now, in this diagram here, you can see the entire circulatory system of the mammal consisting of a heart that is connected to various blood vessels that convey the blood to the various parts of the body. The heart consists of four chambers. The upper chambers are known as auricles. So we have the left and the right. So this is the right auricle and this is the left auricle. Then the lower chambers are known as ventricles. Likewise, there is a right ventricle. Ventricles. And the left ventricle. Now, oxygenated blood from the lungs. Here are the lungs. So oxygenated blood from the lungs enters the left auricle through the pulmonary vein and then into the left ventricle that is the left ventricle so the blood enters then into the left ventricle then the left ventricle pumps the blood out of the heart through the major artery known as the outer the outer divides into carotid and subclavian arteries that take blood to the head and upper arm region. So you can see the head and the upper arm regions are supplied by the subclavian artery. Carotid, takes, carotid artery takes the blood to the head. The main arteries divide and subdivide into arterioles, that is small arteries, which split into capillaries. So each major organ, each major organ has many capillaries, has many capillaries through which materials are brought to the tissues through which the materials are brought to the tissues. Okay. Now, the capillaries are very fine and form a network which is in close contact with almost all the cells of the body. So if you look at all the major parts of the body, there are capillaries, be it the liver, even in the elementary canal, in the lungs, there are capillaries through which exchange of materials between the blood and the tissues take place. Oxygen and food materials are taken up by the cells, while carbon four oxide and waste products diffuse into the blood at the capillaries. The capillaries then merge to form venules, the tiny veins, which then merge further to form the main veins that carry the blood out of the respective organs. So each major organ and region has an artery like for example the kidney has renal artery that brings blood to the organ and renal vein that carries blood away from it the veins return blood to the right auricle so from different parts of the body all the veins return their blood to the right auricle part of the heart. Now, the neck and lower part of the body, it is the blood coming from the neck and the lower part of the body, drain their blood into the inferior vena cava. That is the blood coming from the liver through the hepatic vein, coming from the kidney through the renal 
vein coming from the trunk and the legs. Coming from the trunks and the legs through the iliac vein. All this drain into the inferior vena cava. While the blood coming from the head and the neck region drain into the superior vena cava. All of which join and drain the blood into the right atrium. From the right atrium, the blood is pumped into the right ventricle, which then pumps blood out through the pulmonary artery to the lungs for oxygenation. So you can see that uh, if you start from the left auricle, the blood will be pumped out through the general circulation, also known as the systemic circulation, and back to the heart, then from the heart is pumped to the lungs for oxygenation, and then back to the heart once more, such that for every complete circulation, the blood will have to flow through the heart twice, thus making it double circulation. Now, one important thing to note is that uh, blood brought to the elementary canal by the mesenteric artery. Okay. does not go back to the general circulation directly. Instead, this blood is first taken to the liver through the hepatic portal vein. Now, why is that important? This is because the liver plays a very important role in the metabolism, storage, and distribution of nutrients to other parts of the body. The liver is also the center where detoxification takes place. So anything that may have been absorbed that is harmful to the cells is neutralized within the liver cells. So it's very important that absorbed materials are first taken to the liver for regulation. For example, any excess glucose is converted into glycogen for storage so as not to raise the blood osmotic pressure too much. Excess amino acids are also deaminated so as not to affect the blood composition. Then from the liver, the blood is then taken back to the general circulation through the hepatic vein, which joins the vena cover, and eventually back to the heart.